Welcome to Adam Block Studios with me, Adam Block. I'd like to show you something that I came across on the Pixinsight forum. A gentleman posted a question as to why his flat field image was not calibrating his data. And so I'd like to look at his particular data set, his example, and see what might be going on. I'd like to just kind of show my approach for looking at problematic data and make some headway potentially in understanding what was going on. So we're going to look at his data right up there and uh, see how far we get. So let's look at it here. One thing about this data set is that it, it does appear to come from a one-shot color camera. So that's fine. It just means that the data that I'm going to be showing you here, I'm, I'm not going to bother to debayer it. We just need to calibrate it, and so you don't need to go any extra steps. We'll be able to see how the flat fuel is working even without debayering anything. So we have uh, the data itself of a globular cluster. Then he did provide a dark frame, which is good. We can see the warm pixels. We can also see the amp glow that's there. And then there is a flat field image as well. Now, I've already displayed this flat field image in some reasonable way with the screen stretch, but it shows you that there is vignetting like you would typically get, and there are shadows cast by dust. Now, this to some people might look like a lot of dust. For me, no, that not so. I, in, in the observatory that I used to operate, um, there was so much dust all the time, you have to clean regularly. So this is perfectly fine, as far as I'm concerned. And all of this should flat out just fine when things are working well. Now, things are not always working well, so let's investigate that. In order to demonstrate what's not working, we need to calibrate the data. Now, I can either open up these files in WBPP, where we would load one dark, one flat, one light field image, and then calibrate it. We could do that. But it's only one frame, so we can even be even simpler than that. Just use pixel math to do the job. So for pixel math, we're just going to simply subtract the dark and flat the image. Um, oh, I know one thing I need to do. We need to rename these, make it life easier on us. So I'm going to rename this a flat. And I'm going to rename the other one a dark. That'll make life much easier. Now, we we'll put in the expression that we want, which is to take the image, subtract the dark, and then divide by the flat. I mean, that's really it. There's no, there's nothing going on there. However, in order to basically normalize the image, you also need to multiply times the median, the average value of the flat. And that'll keep everything making sense here. That should properly calibrate this data. So we have dark flat, there's the data. Let's zoom out. Let me show you that uh, it may not be clear here. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can do this. Oop, I almost got to zoom out. There we go. Make the image a little brighter just before we calibrate because I really want to show the uh, little dust donuts in here. There we go. It's a little hard because the image isn't very bright, but now you can see, they're a little hard to see, but you can see them. You can definitely see some of the dust donuts showing up here in the frame. Now, perhaps even before I continue, I do want to point something out. Let's, let's just look at the difference between the flat and here, this is again a raw frame, right? I haven't calibrated yet. Just look at this with your eyeball for a moment. Do you see things in one image that are maybe different than the other? So I tell you what, I'm going to be very specific about it. Something that stands out to me is that I see these two things right here very prominently, and I see them prominently here. But in the flat, I see this prominently, and I, don't, I can see something of it here, but I don't see it prominently there. I predict that that's a problem. And I suspect that's not the only problem in this flat if you compare 
uh, some of these shadows to some of the other shadows in the image. Okay, so I've given you kind of a, a precursor of what I think is going to happen, but let's go ahead and calibrate and see if it does happen. Indeed, it does. So let me uh, try to zoom out and zoom in, and there we go. Try to make this a little brighter, more contrast. And what you'll see is that most of things did calibrate here. Most of the things went away. The two dust donuts here went away, but the big guy did not. There's some stuff over here that did not go away. And I notice, and it's a little hard to see here, well, maybe if I zoom in, it's a little easier. Uh, you can see that some of these dust donuts that didn't go away, they actually have an embossed appearance to them. Those are all very, very symptomatic of the fact that there is something about the flats that had changed between the light frames, the light images. So all right off the top, that's all I actually needed to see when looking at this data is that these giveaways here, that there was something in the flat that was different than the raw light frame, and that's why this thing shows up, and that uh, many of these dust donuts here are embossed, that tells me that there was a change in the optical system. So there is something about the way it was illuminated, the field, or something about a change in the position of the camera. I, I can't say, but I can say very strongly that something changed. Now, having demonstrated that something is not right, there is another element of this that I'd like to show as a technique, and this is the thing that you can always use to maybe figure out if something is changing in your system. Um, certainly from a, the vantage point of the flats themselves, because there was something you know a little bit odd about what I was seeing here. One of the things that this gentleman gave is not only did he give his combined flat, that is his integrated flat, master flat, but he gave one of the subframes as well. So here's a subframe image, one of his subflats. Oh, that might be one of the, sorry, that's the dark. Let's be sure I get a, a subflat here. Here is one of his subflats. Okay. So I have here the master flat and I have the subflat. And the technique that you can always do, and I'm going to rename this subflat, is you can take one of these images and divide it by the other. Anytime you have two flats, if you take one flat and you divide it by the other flat, when you're doing like panel flats, you're not worried about big changes in brightness. Um, you can divide one by the other and you should get a very evenly illuminated frame. I mean, it just has to be because you're really taking something that should be very similar images and uh, you should get basically ones. But let's perform that experiment here. So you can, do, you can do this either way. You can do subflat divided by the master, or you can do the master divided by the subflat. I like to do the subflat here, and I will divide by the master flat here, like this. We will create a new image, and I'm going to rescale the result because I'm taking a smaller, potentially smaller number divided by a bigger, so I just want to keep it uh, in the correct range here. And then let's see what we get. We get an image which looks like this, and the whole problem is, with this image, there's still stuff there. That should be, and I don't know if I can zoom in here enough to, I mean, it's hard because it is virtually the same values, but not quite. You can still see stuff left over here. It almost looks to me like when this gentleman created his flat field image, he combined two flats that were slightly different from one another in some way. That's what it looks like to me. It looks like his master flat was a commingling of flats that were slightly different. And uh, give me just a moment here. I'm going to pause. Let me open up. If I do the same experiment with one of my flats, one of my masters with one of my subs, you can see what the difference looks like. Okay, so here we have 
two of my flats. And again, it looks very similar to the gentleman's in the sense that, you know, it's a seemingly a diseased looking mess here. Uh, this is a sub here, and this is the actual master flat, which is the integration of many of them. So I'm gonna say my master, and then here I'm gonna say my sub. And once again, I'll take my sub divided by my master, like that. Um, everything else should be the same. Almost got it. And there we go. This is what I get. And I think you'll agree that this looks much more uniform. It's not perfect. I mean, there's going to be noise. It, you can see a little bit of something there. Uh, but compared to the result that we were getting here, that's very, very different. There is something going on here that just does not, and I can't seem to display this the way I want to. There we go. Now I can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to get enough contrast here. There's enough information still there that it tells me there is something about his master flat that was effectively flawed. So it's always flat. I mean, flats are tough. They're hard. Um, but this is a technique then that you can take one flat and divide it by the other, and you'll be able to see if something about the system is changing. So if you ever wanted to know, you know, is a flat that I took a month ago, is it still the same as what it is today? Divide them one by the other and you can very quickly evaluate whether there is something about your optical system that is changing, or in the case that I'm doing here, you can evaluate whether the master flat in this case is a good one. So I hope you enjoyed just looking for a moment about something very simple, something rudimentary, fundamental, is flat field images, uh, but they're not magical. There's nothing special about them. There are ways to look at them and determine if they are going to work for you and do what you want them to do. Thank you very much for joining me this time. I look forward to seeing you again at Adam Block Studios.